Hello, BookTube. We've got a little mixed bag of mail for you today. A uh, few periodicals, a package, that sort of thing. I switched filming locations once again. I'm going to keep trying this. This is the one that most of you seem very vocally to prefer because uh, the bean is in the picture. <laughs> she is at her window. She's not doing much, so I don't know. I don't know why you need to see her, especially since you should be keeping your eyes on the prize. Uh, but it's a beautiful, beautiful day. I don't think the temperature here is going to reach 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just an amazing difference turnaround in 24 hours. Just amazing. The the first day that we were back, uh, and the first night, was cloyingly hot and humid. Impossible for Frida to go to get comfortable on uh, what was that Wednesday night Wednesday night uh, and then Thursday and today completely different uh, drier air cooler air just lovely I think rain is coming for Boston but uh, for now I'll definitely take this if it makes her comfortable I'll definitely take this I uh, Wednesday night she was so uncomfortable uh, sleeping either out here or in the little book room that I for the first time thought about the AC unit which is sitting on a back landing, and I would rather not use it. I don't like it at all. Uh, I don't. I don't like how cold it makes the room. First of all, I also don't like just the way it changes the feel of the air. I don't. I don't like the the menacing hum of the thing at all. But the baby comes first, so we shall see. I don't think that oppressive heat or humidity returns to Boston for a good solid week. So there's no reason to get the surly houseboy to lug that thing into the window. No reason at all. So very blissful and there's a little bit of mail here i think more mail is coming uh but we've got we've got a mixed bag certainly enough to talk about like for instance uh, uh we have uh, one of the latest issues of the vineyard gazette the martha's vineyard gazette this is a, an old style broadsheet newspaper and this is a particularly optimistic uh issue because not only is it full of stories about the island bouncing back. The island, man, man, Martha's Vineyard is a vacation island off the coast of Massachusetts. And not only is this issue full of great stories about the island bouncing back in time for the full summer season, after not having a summer season last year, but also this is the issue that congratulates the class of 2021. Uh, so it's full, uh, the inside is full of great stories about uh, these really bright, personable kids that are just, they're, they're, they're raring to go. They're raring to get at the adult world. They're raring to go to college and then make a difference, both on the island and in the world. That's always wonderful to see. I love it when the local newspaper does that. This uh, issue has no Steve Donahue book review, uh, but those are coming. A few slot of those are coming. Uh, but speaking of Steve Donahue uh, book content, we have this. Look at this beautiful thing. The new smoke signals, the new Big Canoe News. From northern Georgia. This is a tiny newspaper. Uh, look at that beautiful color photo there. Original color photos of a, a goose and some goslings. Uh, this ha comes in multiple sections. It's all in color. It is a local newspaper for the Big Canoe area of northern Georgia. So it's got a, it's, it's got a very small uh, numerical circulation and over a very small geographical area, but it is a beautiful production. You've got full color uh, photographs, you've got uh, the news section is up front, then living and uh, opinions and all sorts of things, all in color. All very attractively laid out. And as if that weren't attraction enough, <laughs> let us let us see if we can quickly find the real attraction. At the back of the news section of the paper, so not in art, not in, uh, not, not in art or entertainment, but in the back of the news section, is Big Canoe's gorgeous two-page spread of books coverage. Look at that. Look at how lovely that is. Oh my. Uh, and uh, the reason that, I, I mean, I would love it anyway. I would love the look of it. That kind of local books coverage at such length is rare and really great. Really, really great. Uh, but in addition to that, I am the book editor. I am the editor of this section. For, for Big Canoe News in Northern Georgia. All of this stuff is put together by me. All of it is commissioned, or in this case, written by me. We have a nice long review of the book we've seen on this channel, American Republics. We have a review by a freelancer of Fox and I, a, a book that I praised on this channel. We have uh, our mystery columnist uh, writing about uh, gritty true crime. 
Uh, and then on the opposite page, we have uh, a reviewer reviewing the new biography of Marjorie Keenan Rawlings, the author of The Yearling. Uh, we have uh, a reviewer writing about the Appalachian Trail. And we have yours truly reviewing the last of uh, Alison Weir's novels about the wives of King Henry VIII. Uh, so that, that is a, a print section review of mine <laughs> that, uh, th that just adds to the fun of this print book section. Cannot say, just cannot tell you how proud I am of the finished product. The, the thing that originally attracted me to, re to freelance book reviews for Big Canoe News was how attractive a job they do in laying everything out. It's just a beautiful section. It's a beautiful paper, just in general. Uh, but the book section is beautiful. Big, generous, two-page spread of books. Just lovely. And then I got the chance to be the editor of that section. So I am, once again, for a very long time, I am a print newspaper book section editor. I think that I, of the, ab, let's face it, limited number of people who have that job in this country at the moment, uh, I think my little, uh, my little patch is the smallest. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that nobody has a print newspaper with a dedicated book section of original content that's smaller than mine. But nevertheless... I aim to make something of it. I aim, once once traction grows and once word starts to, to spread, that that two-page of books coverage in Big Canoe News cannot be missed. That it's that it cannot be missed. That it's it, that these are valuable book reviews, valuable, readable, fun, enjoyable, engaging, argument-starting book reviews. Once traction like that starts to build, I feel certain that both our circulation will go up and our reach will increase naturally. Uh, my dream now is for a Big Canoe News blurb to show up on the paperback of a book. That is my dream now. Uh, we'll wait and see if it can happen. We, we do, I do those two full pages once a month. Big Canoe News Smoke Singles comes out once a month and for $30 a year you can get it delivered to your doorstep just like it was to me. In full color, a big newspaper that's granted got a lot of Georgia news in it. But there's a lot of stuff that isn't Georgia, and right at the heart of it, right in the center, at the end of the news section, in the center of the paper, is a book section that very much is not regional. There's nothing regional about my book section. It's it, there are, in my opinion, there are no such things as regional readers. So, it, the uh, what I'm trying to do, except for columns, columnists have a much greater latitude to take their own, to take the you know march to the beat of their own drum. Uh, but as far as the the book reviews go, they are going to be reviews informative, entertaining, readable book reviews of stuff that you're going to see in bookstores in the month that that issue comes out. So so that in addition to entertaining you, they will also maybe help you. We, we shall see. I, it, it's always an extra turbo boost thrill to get smoke signals in the mail and see my book section in print. That is always an extra thrill. So I was very happy, very happy when that happened. I'm going to have to go over it uh, at length and lovingly look at all of those pieces but boy oh boy what a thrill and july's issue is is barreling your way <laughs> we have, my mystery columnist only turns in a column once every other month so july will feature a column by me about coming attractions about books that are coming out in july and my thoughts on some of them plus a whole bunch of reviews so <laughs> anyway that's great that's fantastic so big canoe news is out and then we have i also got in the mail a catalog for forthcoming new york review of books paperbacks. Uh, I've had a bit of a fraught relationship with New York Review of Books paperbacks. Sometimes their editorial choices just don't line up with me at all. Uh, but I, I've read a few that I really liked. I've got a couple recently that I haven't read yet, uh, but that strike me as very interesting. Not at all the kind of Williamsburg pinky in the air, waxed mustache tips, uh, precious Cantab Lounge literati type stuff, but actually enjoyable. There was one called Mr. Beethoven by Paul Griffiths. We saw that on the channel just the other day, a hypothetical novel in which Beethoven comes to America. We saw another book called The Netanyahu's that seemed also very interesting. But this catalog, oh my, this catalog has some stuff in it that I'm hoping I get. I'm getting a catalog from them in the mail. I'm also getting some books from them in the mail. So I must be on somebody's mailing list at the MYRB. I didn't think I was until these things started showing up regularly. But for instance, Elizabeth Taylor's novel, Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont, is getting a New York Review of Books paperback. Uh, there is a new translation of Dante's Purgatorio uh, 
It's just that's amazing that, that, that I might get that in the mail. There's uh, an edition of H. B. H. U. Wells' War of the Worlds, illustrated by Edward Gorey, uh, that I can't wait. Can't wait to, to see if it if it if it actually comes here. There's a very lovely looking edition of Edith Wharton's Ghost Stories. Edith Wharton had a penchant for writing ghost stories. She really enjoyed doing it, and they were really enjoyed by her readers. So any new collection is fine by me. Uh, I thought there was one other. Maybe not. Maybe I'm exhausted. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. There was one other. Not so much I'm eagerly looking forward to as a how dare you on cats with an introduction by Margaret Atwood. For God's sake, the only thing you could do to finish that trifecta was be if it has an epilogue by uh, Cormac McCarthy. So it's a book about cats with a foreword by uh, Margaret Atwood. <laughs> but in addition to all of those periodicals, I also got a package in the mail, so we won't be completely book free. Could be that more books are coming today. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll at least have this one to, to look at and see. Uh, Okay, so what have we got here? Oh no! Oh, okay. This oh, this must be a paperback original then. Uh, we've seen this already on this channel, but uh, I I guess I must have thought that it was. Yo, no, it's a paperback original, and it comes out in late June. Uh, I have already reviewed this thing. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we have here. This is by Caterina Bonvicini. And it is the the year of our love. It's an English language translation of the year of our love, by a very popular, apparently Italian author. Uh, a sweeping romantic drama set in Rome over the course of nearly four decades. This book chronicles the history of contemporary Italy through one couple's relationship, a fervent affair rooted in friendship that transcends the boundaries of social class. Already a success in Europe, other press is excited to introduce this resonant, heartfelt novel to U.S. readers. Uh, and it, it opens in the 1970s and follows the two main characters uh, who are named uh, Olivia and Valerio. And Olivia is the, the, the daughter of a very wealthy family, a very wealthy industrialist family, and Valerio is the son of their housekeeper. Uh, so that's what they mean by, uh, very, by separate social strands. Uh, but they, and they end up experiencing a kind of personal fascination with each other, and it's an on-again, off-again thing as they, we follow them through time. Uh, I, if I remember, I'll leave a link to my review of it down below. A very attractive paperback. Uh, and a, a book that has lots of strengths, lots of things in it that are very strong. Uh, so that is, uh, I mean, if you like, if you like uh, the combination of a, sort of a year-by-year -year chronicle of relatively contemporary history and also a love story, a complicated love story, uh, then you're gonna like this book and it's a it's a paperback. It's $17 in your bookstore So it's uh, probably worth your time to investigate if it sounds good to you uh, But that's it. That is the mail for today so far I'm feeling that a lot more is coming if it does and it's possible for me to film uh, I will. Oh Bean, you look so deflated. Why do you look so deflated? Huh? Oh, baby, what's the matter? Uh, if it's not possible for me to film for one reason or another, uh, then I'll just sit on the mail and open it when it is possible. I won't open it off camera. I, I won't do that. But anyway, that is that is a little uh, odds and ends mail haul uh, for today. I'll wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, book two.